Have you ever played One Word Story? It's a very simple game. A few people take turns, going around to make a sentence. Each person adds one word. Until the sentence is complete, then someone says period. And it's read back. It's actually pretty fun if you play with the right people. But I'm pretty antisocial and only have one or two friends. They don't like the game as much as I do, eh, so I use a random chat site to play with strangers. It's completely anonymous, so my identity is supposed to be safe in theory. Anyways, it was late afternoon on a Saturday and uh, I was in the middle of a game when my apartment went dark. It was probably caused by the weird heat. All week, other tenants in my building had complained about the power cutting short around this. It only lasted a few minutes, but when the power came back on, I saw that I had been disconnected from the site. When I tried to re-enter, I couldn't. It kept crashing or something, and I just kept getting disconnected. I'm easily bored, and was a little more than pissed that I hadn't finished my game, so I took to Google and searched chat room, anonymous, one word story, and after 0.18 Two to three seconds, according to Google, it had 23,000 results. I scrolled down the page and tried a few sites out, but either the players weren't very good or I was led to an anonymous sex chat site. It wasn't until the third page of results that I found something interesting. Microfiction.com. I clicked the heading and entered the site, then I logged in as a guest. I was really surprised to see how dedicated the site was to an overall simple game. Mystery, parody, anime, music, cartoons, horror, film, superstition, and superhero were just a few of the categories that people could use to play one word story. Now for no particular reason, I went to mystery first and played a few short games, then I went to horror and then to music, and to a few others. Eventually I went to take a bathroom break and made sure to bookmark this site, so I could visit it in the future. The site was pretty well managed under each main heading, for example horror, there were various subheadings, and these were games being hosted by members. Some games only had a few people in them, others had about 30 to 40. Some were open to anyone. Others were private games that you could only get into if you had a password that the host had provided you with. I played for a few hours, really enjoying myself because everyone here took the game just seriously enough to make each sentence interesting but also had enough fun to make the whole story funny to read out loud, while still making sense. It was 10 now, and then 10.30, which was my self-imposed bedtime, so I resigned to play one more game before going to bed. Going to Mystery for the last time that night, I found a private game. Being a guest on the site, I couldn't message the person to ask to join. And I would have kept looking for a public game, except that the page froze. I refreshed it, and saw that the game had been changed to public, with room for one person. And I thought about that. A one-on-one -on -one game of word story. And I felt excited at the possibility that this guy would be just as good as I was. And we could create something really unique. So, I joined. The host, username is doppelganger1221, went first. I had appeared on the screen, almost instantly, the letter. I was impressed with this guy's bravery, as using I in this game usually led to embarrassing sentences in the long run, so I rewarded him with a simple enough word that would keep the sentence going. C. He responded almost immediately with you. And this was honestly a very amateur tactic. It would make the game harder to finish, and the unsettling approach was never enough to make me quit. I decided to humor him though, and typed through. His response? Your. Uh, I thought about where the sentence was going and noticed that my living room window was still open from the afternoon. I typed window, his response was a period, signaling the end of the sentence. I see you through your window. I chuckled to myself, realizing this guy was a creep, a player who tries to make unsettling or disturbing sentences to scare his opponents into leaving the game, he probably had a friend with him, and they were thinking of ways to scare me. And I don't blame him. My sister and I did that last Halloween when I babysat for my parents. I started the next sentence. You. His reply? R. My reply? Not. His reply? Safe. My reply was a period ending the sentence. You are not safe. Again, <laughs> I chuckled and watched as he started the next sentence. I appeared on the screen and I typed am, which was followed by coming. 
I thought about ending, ending the sentence here as a slight punishment against the guy for not taking the game seriously. Instead, I typed four to see if he would type what I thought he would. He typed you and whoa, I was right on the money. And I typed a period. I am coming for you. At this point, it wasn't funny anymore, it's just boring. There was a chat, so I used it to tell the guy to cut the creep stuff out. I told him it wasn't funny, and if he didn't cut it out, I'd leave the game, and he actually replied. Look out your window. Now that caught me off guard, but I did what I was told. Across the street, a light post had burned out its bulb. Which I hadn't noticed before, it was pretty dark and I couldn't really make out any shapes. I turned back to the monitor, doppelganger typed I. And I saw in the chat that he had posted another comment. Basically, he was telling me t what to write. I was becoming fed up with him, but 10.30 was just five minutes away, so I reasoned to just finish. And as he asked, I typed have. He typed a. I typed gun. He typed two. I typed your. He typed head. I finished the sentence with a period. <laughs> I have a gun to your head? <laughs> I laughed aloud, closed my eyes, stretched to my desk. I just wanted this game to be over. It was my turn. He had sent me another list of words, so I typed I, he typed am, I typed add, he typed your, and I typed window, and he typed a period. I met your window. Reading it aloud, I realized the game was over. We had made the story relate to our first sentence. Out of habit, I read every sentence out aloud. I see you through your window. You are not safe. I am coming for you. I have a gun to your head. I am at your window. I finished reading and rested my head against my chair. Yawning. I was drowsy and thought about sleeping in my chair when a loud cracking sound echoed across the empty street outside and I noticed the crack that was spiderwebbing from the center of my computer monitor. I blinked to full awareness and saw it. The glint of a bullet sticking out of my screen. I turned my head behind me and screamed as I saw someone in a mask staring in through my window. Out of panic, I dashed out of my chair and into my bedroom. I hid in the closet under a thick pile of dirty laundry and waited, trying to control my rapid breathing as my eyes adjusted to the uncomfortable darkness. It was a few minutes before I had heard soft footsteps. The maniac was in my bedroom. I could see his dark boots and leather pants. He fired the gun again in my bedsheets. He must have thought I was hiding under the covers. He rummaged through my drawers, took something that I thought was money or my prescription meds, I saw him stalk towards my bathroom and fire a shot into the shower. He looked around in there before turning around and looking under my bed. He was almost level with the floor so I could see his features. He was at least six feet and dressed in all black except for his mask, which was white with red tear tracks under the eyes and a painted set of crooked, beast-like teeth. He seemed to see perfectly in the dark. I could really only see him because his clothes seemed to be darker than the already lightless interior of my bedroom. After what felt like hours, he stood up and walked out of my room. I stayed in my closet all night, eventually falling asleep, covered in my unclean socks and underwear. I smelled horrible in the morning, and the first thing I did was take a shower. I stepped on the bullet that had torn a hole in my shower curtains. Afterwards, I called the cops, who told me to come down to the station. I got ready to go, but couldn't find my keys anywhere. While looking through the drawers of my desk, I complained internally about my monitor being busted. I could still use the site the chat room, and the game, and took a picture of it with my phone for the police. Now in the kitchen looking for my keys, it hit me that I had kept them in my dresser drawer and ran into my room to see what the psycho had taken, which was my keys. Ugh. I was about to call my buddy for a ride when I accidentally opened my photo gallery. I was very annoyed with myself until I took another look at the picture I had taken. Something was different in the picture that I remembered from last night. There was a new line in the chat. A single word. A simple question. A word I had used so many times over the... <sighs> so many times after every game was over. I never thought that the word would send shivers down my spine, nor turn my blood icy in my veins. It's just one word. Rematch. Well, that was certainly something, based on not a video game, but rather a socially played game over a chat room, and it's not the first chat room creepypasta by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly one of the better ones that I've read. While it felt really quickly done and over with, certainly these 
should have some form of build-up and tension, and that leads to a generally longer creepypasta than usual. Uh, you know, the, the best example I can give here is the excellent Funny Mouth creepypasta that we read a while back, which, you know, while it was very lengthy, it worked because it really built its tension up. It really, really built up. And I feel like if this built up itself a little bit more, I, I would have definitely loved it almost even as much as that. But uh, let's talk about this creepypasta story-wise, plot-wise. The concept of someone who tracks you down and attempts to kill you seems kind of heavy-handed, of course, when you really look at it as a whole. But the way it handled it was nice. I just wish that there was a little more believability with somebody who tracks you down. You know, obviously, if you're dealing with some kind of a hacker, maybe go into... You know, some nitty gritty of how it's even feasible for them to find you that quick and be outside your place. I mean, unless they were already out there and they just happen to know your username. Actually, you know, that sounds kind of believable, but the thing is, it should be explained more. Uh, some of those gaps, that those gaps specifically, should not be filled by the reader in any stretch of the imagination. I feel like the descriptions for that definitely need to come out in a more realistic fashion. It needs to be built upon. That's the whole point of build-up. Now, again, the whole part of believability is one thing, but while it was not the best creepypasta I've read, it certainly is not the worst. Uh, it's definitely quite good in how it's handled. I mean, I, I feel like the framework is there. It's obviously a very short creepypasta in terms of overall length, but I feel like if they stretched it out and built upon each thing as a whole, hey, maybe if you made a compelling bad guy to hunt you down, right now all it seemed like this was some mutated freak who was stealing car keys and molly pills and running away out of there. It, it seems... It, it sort of seems like it's almost a blur where it just speeds the hell past you. When, in all honesty, if it slowed down, if it really, you know, discussed what it was it was all about, I feel like it would be a much better story than it already is. But ultimately, this is all I can really say about this. It was very decent. My hairs definitely did stick up as I was reading it through, and the ending was nice. Although it was heavy-handed, uh, it's just my opinion and all that, uh, in, in all that, it's really just my opinion. And the thing is, I've read so many of these at this point that a lot of these cliches sort of hit even farther than uh, they would for many other people. But that being said, uh, I would like to ask you what you would rate this creepypasta, what you would change to make it better, and, uh, well, if you're scared of going to play on chat rooms like this, what do you think about this creepypasta? Again, it's just what I would always ask you, and I do really, really, really enjoy reading through your input. That being said, this has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, part of Creepypastas. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.